In today's show, we're looking at Thursday's action. There were two games on, but there's lots of news to cover. We're going to do a trade from one of you viewers slash listeners. We're going to do a lot of stuff. So, I guess, Michael Bolton? Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble on TikTok at RedRock underscore Beeble on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. It's only two games on, so we don't have huge amounts of stuff going on. But there is a bunch of news. We're going to do waiver wire trends. We're going to do a trade from for you from one of you guys submitted to, and there'll be a, uh, a team quiz. So, all right, let's do it, Warney. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> All right. Maga Porter Jr., it looks like he is back. He has been upgraded to questionable and said he is playing. Wendell Carter Jr. has also been upgraded to questionable. And Gary Harris has been upgraded to questionable. So the Orlando Magic players are returning. That is going to be something to watch to see how that impacts everybody else there. Jimmy Butler and Kyle Lowry, they're back as well. So in Miami, we get more of a chance to th- see things for Victor Oladipo and Max Struess and Caleb Martin. Kyrie is off the injury report in Brooklyn. Great. Marcus Smart and Clint Capella are both questionable. For Capella, that's an upgrade. For Smart, we don't really know where that is. Unfortunately, in uh, Minnesota, Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert has been put back on the injury report as questionable with that ankle problem. So... Maybe we go back and grab Naz Reed. We don't know whether Gobert is going to play. So Reed would obviously be a great streamer. Some unfortunate news. Devin Booker is out again, but Chris Paul isn't on the injury report. Cameron Payne's out there as well. Eric Gordon is out in Houston, so KJ Martin will probably get a start almost definitely. Maybe there's more minutes for Tari preseason. I don't know. We'll see. They've been playing Easton Moore as a four versus a four, uh, versus a three, but maybe we get some opportunity. And then the huge one, Des Bain. He's back. Danny Green wasn't lying. Even though the team was. The team was like, oh, man, another three to four weeks. Bloody hell. And then Danny Green said, no, he'll be there on Christmas. You go, okay, which, who's lying? Well, the team. The team that always lies about the injury reports, the Memphis Grizzlies. So Bain is back. So obviously we're dropping Lil John Concha. Dylan Brooks becomes more to the periphery of a 12-team league. And then we'll see how that Brooks, Bain, Morant, Jackson, we haven't seen them play together. We'll see how the usage distribution looks in these games moving forward. But that's huge to get Des Bain back either Friday or on Christmas Day. We love having Des Bain in there. He's been great this season when he's played, and now he is back. Time for question of the day. I realized that when with me not saying who the college was, I was excluding the audio listeners, so I'll tell you who it is. This player went to St. John's. They were drafted by the Knicks, and their last team was the Houston Rockets. Who is it? If you are watching on YouTube, drop that player's name in the comments down below. Let's look at a trade question from JP Lawrence. It's a 12-team league, nine categories, 15 roster spots, so a little bit deeper. So his trade was Trey Young for Zach Levine and Paulo Banquero. Okay, let's assess that. So obviously when we're doing a two-for-one trade, we're opening up a streaming spot on the waiver wire, which is always going to be a positive to me. Trey is the best player in that group, even though he has had some struggles this season without any doubt whatsoever. And we you know, pr- could pretty comfortably say that um, Bunkero has been great this year and Levine's been you know, like, okay, I say. This is maybe the fair way of, of saying that about Zach. So the advantage immediately here, you think, goes to the one side because you have... Um, because you have the extra streaming spot. So I plugged it into Basketball Monster projections and using current stats. And to simulate a waiver wire player, I used Grayson Allen. So I'm basic, I could use Grayson Allen. The other one I put in there was Zach Collins. 
as another option um, that I could throw in there as like a waiver wire guy. Instead, you know, to sort of simulate simulate that player who's sort of been on and off rosters all the time. Um, and to me, even, even with Trey Young having some struggles this season, it's clearly that side. That using season long numbers, if I do Trey Young and Grayson Allen for Zach Levine and Paolo Bonquero, the Trey Young side with Grayson Allen is better, even based on what Trey has currently done where he hasn't been at his best. Right? You you do gain some scoring, but you lose um assists, you lose free throw percentage by a considerable amount there as well. But you do gain in some other areas. So it's really going to be dependent on, on what you're looking for in a trade. Like this sort of trade, your Polo and Zach are both shooting at 45% for the year, whereas Trey's at 41 and say Grayson's at 46. But I still think that, that having that value, those extra games available, your streaming ability with Grace and Allen there is just significantly better. But again, like most trades, this depends. This one here, look, you lose threes if you trade away if you if you trade away Trey Young, you lose threes. You and you know, with an appropriate waiver guy, you lose assists, you lose free throw percentage, but you probably gain in field goals, you probably gain with some steals and rebounds and maybe maybe some scoring by getting Lavina Bunkero in. I still in general just give me the guy who is trending upwards, who is the better player. And in a 12, yes, in a 12 team with 15 man rosters, you're a little bit deeper. So that waiver wire value is not as big. But I think that the gap between the Levine and Bunkero pairing versus Trey Young and waiver wire times one and a half, which is sort of how you want to value those guys, would lead me towards Trey. But I'm really, really curious to see how you guys view that because even though Trey's a great scorer, tra- trading away. Levine and Bunkero to get Trey, you are losing in the points category. And that might not be what your team needs. It's why category leagues are so much fun, right? Because it is a, this was not to say points leagues aren't fun. I get it. It's a different trading mechanism though. But basically we see, well, you're losing however many fantasy points versus fantasy points and get them in. But in this one, you will definitely lose out on scoring, but you will gain in other areas. Like getting Trey in, you will gain free throws. You will gain assists. You'll probably gain in threes if you use the waiver wire correctly but you lose in other areas. How much you lose, how much you gain is dependent on what you're doing with that spot and how the rest of your team looks. So, interested to see what your take is on that trade. Trey Young for Zach Levine and Paolo Bunkero. I will rule, bang, gavel time, bang, bang. Uh, I will rule in favor of Trey Young and that side. That is the side that I would want in that deal. Today's episode is brought to you by NHTSA. Did you know... The driving high is considered driving under the influence. That's right. Driving under the influence of marijuana is against the law in every state, even in states where marijuana is legal. That means driving high could get you a DUI. And if you think law enforcement officers can't tell when you're driving high, you're wrong. Your friends can tell, your coworkers can tell, your parents can tell, everyone can tell. So what makes you think that law enforcement officers don't know when you're driving high? Driving under the influence of marijuana can slow your response time and change how you perceive time and speed. So even if you think you're fine to drive when you're high, you're not. Because the bottom line is, if you feel different, you drive different. And driving high is driving under the influence. So remember, drive high, get a DUI, paid for by the NHTSA. Let's go to the waiver wire, the most added players over the last 24 hours. Number one is... Zach Collins, mainly for the stream today and the Thursday, Friday, back-to-back with the potential of Pirtle sitting on Friday. Dan Gafford up 22% with Christos Porzingis out. Great stream. Denny Avdia up 21%. Uh, yeah, no, because Denny didn't even play today. It would have been a good stream, but yeah, it, we can't really, out of nowhere, you're making streams and it plays in advance, streams in advance, getting the guy with a useful schedule, and then he doesn't play out of nowhere. You can't really do anything about that. That's just unfortunate. Aaron Neesmith up 9%. Actually grabbed him in a 12-team league. I don't know how confident I feel about it, but I did grab him. Adrian Griffin Jr. up 9%. He's getting more value now than when Hunter and Collins and Murray were out somehow. I don't know that that sticks, but as a 14-team league guy, at least it's something interesting. Jose Alvarado up 8%. That's more for streaming today. Lonnie Walker up 7 That's definitely on the back of last game. Will you even play him tomorrow when there's 14 games on? Almost definitely not. And then Trey Murphy up 7% is a really good stream for today. The most dropped players off the waiver wire. Um, Naz Reed down 15%. Might want to reverse course on that one. Dante DiVincenzo down 13%. I get it. He's been out. His value probably gets compressed when Wiggins returns, but we don't know that. I still would consider him a hold in some spots. Alec Burks down 12% and Patrick Williams down 12%. 
no worries. We're dropping those players. Although Williams does have two games in the next four nights. Bones Highland down nine, clear drop. Kevon Looney down nine, easy drop. Big Dick Nick Richards down eight. This always happens. Minutes up, people will start fluffing him. Um, and then Plumley doesn't get in foul trouble and he barely plays. He will be an interesting guy to monitor, but Clifford's stubborn as shit. Like, I don't think Clifford's going to make this big change unless Plumley gets hurt. And then the other one is Kyle Anderson, who I wouldn't have been as quick to drop dealing with this back issue, but I get people get impatient. So I guess that's the uh, decision they're making there. All right. First game, Spurs Pelicans. The the old Spurs can't get it done against New Orleans. 126-117. I don't think it was really that close when you look at it. It was only a nine-point margin here. Felt more than that. How's um how's our man Stan Johnson? Did you know he played for the Spurs? 13 minutes, 12 points, four rebounds, one steal, two blocks. That is literally a fantastic fantasy line. I don't know how he plays every single night or how he gets minutes in the rotation or how he does anything remotely like this. But last game was solid for Stan as well. Hey, if you're in a 30-team league or a 20-team league, maybe, maybe. He showed a few little flashes last season as well in limited time when he was there, like when he played for the Lakers. There was a little bit there for Stanley, enough enough to consider, I guess, for deeper leagues, but we'll keep an eye on that. Vassell had 10, 9, and 5 with three steals. That's okay. Trey Jones, 19, 2, and 3. That's okay. But I guess the, the biggest story, apart from... Stanley Johnson doing things is Jeremy Sohan. Sohan now. Yeah, now. Is it now though? 23, 9, and 6, 2 threes, 31 minutes, only one steal. 7 of 10 from the line. I love him getting to the line 10 times. I love the six assists. I think there's a little bit of flukiness with this, but what I'm more interested in is they started him again. They pushed him to the bench for Bates Diop and they went back to Sohan and he was running some point. He hit some threes. I don't think he's a 12 team league ad. Like he's been not even remotely close to that so far. I've been talking him as a 14-16 team league guy on waiver wise, and I would I would have already grabbed him on those. I've been saying that for about three weeks. Um, I'd definitely grab him in 16. I'd consider in 14. 12, I'm not quite there yet, but this is really interesting. High scoring, good assists, some efficiency. It doesn't feel 100% real, and I think if you added him, you'd probably end up dropping him after next game in 12s. But deeper leagues, sure. Go for it. I think there is a risk that Pirtle sits tomorrow. 22 minutes for him here. 13, 4, and 1. There is still a buy low in effect there. Well, Joshie Richardson had 14 in 21 minutes, and Langford started but didn't really play at all. He had five fouls in his 18 minutes. Some of that allowed Stan Johnson to play that much. Also, the fact that they started Bates D up last game and then played him nine minutes here. It's getting close to the Oklahoma City bullshit where outside of the main couple of guys, it's really hard to rely upon anybody, irrespective of what their role is game to game. Remember, though, that Keldon Johnson, the horse, was out of this game. Whose horse is that? So, of course, his return is going to impact a bunch of different players like Bates, Diop, McDermott, um, Stan Johnson, um, even Sohan. Sohan's not going to get that level of usage. He had, what, 27% usage led the team. He's not going to do that when Calden's there. So just be aware of that when considering to add him. For the Pelicans, they were without players too. Larry Nance, Brandon Ingram, and Zion Williamson. So CJ McCollum predictably went off. 40 and 8, 9 assists, a steal, 2 blocks, 7 triples, 52%. A fantastic game. One of the best games he's, or actually the best game he's had all season. He's actually a top 20 player over the last week. Use this if you want to sell for a top 30 guy. You probably can't. But he just did what he did or what he needed to do with guys out. We didn't see Jonas Valanciunas go crazy. Jonas Vasilinovasas. He had foul trouble, played just 26 minutes, 16 and 10. Okay. And that meant Bill Hernan Gomez played 22. 13, 7, and 5, 1 steal, 2 blocks. Also, remember this for the Pelicans. They're against the Spurs, who are bad. But Hernan Gomez, when he plays, he puts up numbers. But he's not someone to rush and add. Trey Murphy was just okay, 15 and 4 with 2 steals. I'll hold until these players come back. And Najee Marshall, a bit of a turd. 7 and 5 in 25 minutes. He had a really strong top 100 stretch a few weeks ago. He's not that player long term. If you did add him, he's worth holding at least through tomorrow to see what happens, but he's not a long-term guy. But I was impressed, and we hope this would be the case, that Herb Jones would step up with these guys out. 34 minutes, 12-3-2, two, two threes, two steals, a block. That is Herb Jones of old. 50% shooting, 100% from the line. I still only think he's really a defensive specialist, back-end 12-team league player, because those three players being out, they do that does impact him. Like Nance's absence means we need more Jones out there. Zion and Brandon Ingram not out there. We need a little bit more Jones offensively. And that's what we got here. Not that it was big because it was 13 usage, but he still is an impactful 29, 30 minute a night player. Just it doesn't always add up in the box score. But this is one of the opportunities where he was able to put together those stats. So yeah, look at this as an interesting game. 
not necessarily the indication of him being guaranteed must roster. Still more leaning towards the defensive stuff. And whatever you get on top of that, I think has to be considered a bonus. We got 20 minutes of Dyson Daniels. He didn't do very much there. While Alvarado chipped in three steals in 25 minutes. He got the extra minutes due to the blowout, but also due to the absences of those other players. Today's episode is also brought to you by betonline.net. Betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for all professional and amateur leagues, including pro football, college bowl season, college basketball, and the NBA. It's all there at betonline.net. If you want to check out NFL odds for this weekend, the Lions, as they push towards the playoffs, two and a half point favorites on the road against the Carolina Panthers. I hope they do it. I love the Lions. One of my favorite teams. Uh, always have been since I was a kid, and I'm, I'm really excited to see them sort of push forward here. Two and a half point favorites, the Lions are. Can they get it done? You can check out all the Week 16 action at betonline.net, the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to that website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online is where the game starts. All right, we'll do the last game, second game, last game. The Wizards win it. Sorry, they don't. They don't win it at all. 120-112. Again, like the first game, probably a little bit of a misleading scoreline. There was like two, three minutes of garbage time, three minutes of garbage time here that pulled it a little bit closer. The Wizards were without Avdia, Pozingas, and Delon Wright, but they did welcome back Rui Hachimura. Bradley Beal had 35-5. and five. He hasn't hit a three since he returned from injury, I don't believe. That's still a pretty good line, but not at his best yet. Well, Kispert... Replaced Av- Avdia. Wow, that sounded so Aussie. Avdia, 12 points with two threes in 37 minutes. I do not care. Like, he's not worth adding in 12 or 14 team leagues. Dan Gafford, only 20 minutes, 13 points, 67% shooting. Wasn't really fair. He did have three fouls, but you know, obviously could have played more. They just preferred to go with Taj Gibson. Gafford is only a stream because Porzingis is out, while Hachimura in his return had seven and seven. Obviously, do not add Rui Hachimura in 12 or 14 team leagues. Kuzma was 21 and 5, 44 from the fields, a little bit down, but otherwise not bad. While Monte Morris, he got 30 minutes, but 5 and 4, 4 assists, subpar production, and Dylan Wright could be back next game. I do not believe that Monte Morris is a 12 team must roster player. Jordan Goodwin's line is good 11, 5 and 2, a block, played 16 minutes, but he played you know, 3 and a half minutes of garbage time, and Dylan's returning. So don't look at this and go, oh, that's pretty, still pretty good. That is you know, 12 team ish. 11-5-2 with a block on 55% shooting is a 12-team line. But it's not real. It's not something you look at and where you must hold him in 12-team leagues. And we all know what to do with Will, what to do with Will Barton. No, f*** you, Will! No, he's ready to sack that. F*** you, Will! Give it off quick! Yeah, he's back to being bad. 4-2-2. Two, two. Get that garbage out of here! Number 10 overall pick, Johnny Dave. Davis played three scoreless minutes in garbage time for the Jazz. We know that we have to add Walker Kessler, surely. He's still not rostered everywhere. Please change that. 12 and 14, two blocks, 32 minutes. Yes, Olenek is out. I think he's better than Jared Vanderbilt. I'd, I'd roster him over Vanderbilt. Not, I don't think I'd have too much hesitation about that. He looks great. He hustles. He runs hard. He defends well. He's been awesome. He's a must-roster player. Do it. J-O-R-D-A-N-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N. Good usage for Jordo. 23 and 7 with four threes and an assist. I don't believe he's being traded this season. I think you feel pretty comfortable with him. While Malik Beasley played 26 minutes, 25 points, three threes with four steals. Really good game. He's doing what he needs to do. Points, threes, and then added some steals. Remains a 12-teamer. Sexton returned, and you got 18 points in 17 minutes, and you get excited. But, you know, he shot 86%. He did a Sexton and had 18, 1, and 0 with no steals, no blocks. He's in a minutes restriction. I don't think he's playing 27 a night. And I think he needs 27 a night to be a 12-team league player. Therefore, I don't believe he's a 12-team league player. Mike Conley, look, it's getting like he's not a 12-team league guy either. I still think he's a bit of a buy low. In 10s, I'd be okay dropping. In 12s, I still would hold. But 8 points, no rebounds, 6 assists, and 43% shooting. Didn't hit a 3 again in this game. He's still off. He's still way off. How much better can he get? I don't know how much better. I would still look at him as a 12 teamer. While Vanderbilt, so what he, Vanderbilt does is he has these huge games, and then everything else is bad. Then he has a huge game, and then everything else is bad. Three and four in 28 minutes. Took one shot. I think, I think Kessel's better than him, and I think in a 10 team league for Vando, he's a drop, and in a 12 team, he's very much on the borderline. If you did add like a Nikhil Alexander Walker for the week for the three quality games, eight points, two threes, four assists. It's not a complete disaster, but obviously 
You can move on now. They don't play again this week, the Jazz, until Monday. As for Kessler, like you still have him, even though he doesn't play till Monday. And that probably felis- felicitates? No, facilitates. Felicitates. Isn't that to do with Christmas? Felicitations. Jared Vanderbilt um, probably can be dropped. Like without a game for three days, don't really know why you're holding. And the Linux has to return. It'll be interesting what they do in that scenario when Linux returns, how Vanderbilt and Kessler gets used. But Kessler's out playing him most nights, I would say, at the moment. Most nights. Let's look at the lines of the night. I don't think there's much debate here. It's CJ McCullum as your monstrous line of the night. The waiver wire is Billy Hernan Gomez. The young gun is Walker Kessler, and the dart is Monte Morris. Your top 10 players in category leagues for today. Number one was McCullum, followed by Hernan Gomez, Bradley Beal, Walker Kessler, Jordan Clarkson, Herb Jones, Malik Beasley, Stanley Johnson, Lowry Markinen, and Devin Vassell. Your top 10 players rostered in under 50% of leagues. It was Bill Hernan Gomez, followed by Stan Johnson. We talked about that sort of unrealistic shooting. Sohan's the more interesting one here. He was at three, 14-team league streamer, but Keldon was out. That helped. Jordan Goodwin, don't care. Corey Kispert, don't care. Dan Gafford, don't care. Rui Hachimura, don't care. These are like 14 or 16-team league guys, more likely. Alexander Walker's just that 18-team league guy. Alvarado's always a steal stream for whatever league size you're talking. And then at number 10 was Taj Gibson, who's not going to play most nights. Top 10 players in points leagues today. Number one was McCullum, followed by uh, Jeremy Sohan, then Brad Beal, Malik Beasley, Jordan Clarkson, Walker Kessler, Devin Vassell, Billy Hernan Gomez, Kyle Kuzma, and Jonas Valanciunas. I almost called him Vala in a wow sauce because I forgot to push the button. Jonas Vassal in a wow sauce. Vassal win in a sauce, of course. Oh, how can I forget? Let's go to the question of the day. I'm sure you got it. I'm sure you've got your hand down. And your man down because the player who was drafted out of St. John's by the Knicks and last played for the Rockets was, of course, announcer extraordinaire Mark Jacko Jackson. Guys, that'll do it for me today. It's a really short show. Um, I will have shows before Christmas with some week previews and Christmas Day previews. But hey, Merry Christmas to everyone who celebrates it. Happy holidays if you're still having a holiday with your family. And thank you for all your support over uh, the 2022 period. I'll do more of that, more of that sappy shit around New Year's. Guys, follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. And if you are here on YouTube, thumb it up and leave those comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.